<laughs> What's going on, guys? Waco from Revolution here with my friends Lawrence de Reich. How are you, sir? Thank you. Good. Yeah. It's an absolute pleasure to see you. Uh, also, huge congratulations on the amazing success you've had this wonderful Mivi watch. But Thanks. I want to talk to you a little bit about the roots of your brand, right? So talk to me a little bit about this historic trip that you took on a 1962 Vespa GS going through the Silk Route and how you got inspired to create a watch. Uh, it was quite a crazy journey. I was still in my uh, university, but we took, took some time off to, to do an amazing adventure. And, I wanted to do something really special. Um, I was into Vespas, and so yeah, I decided to, to do a, a trip on a Vespa. I went with, together with two friends. They, they drove in a Lada, also a, a very cool old car. Uh, anyhow, so when I was driving on my Vespa, we took the route through the old Silk Road. So we went through Turkey, uh, then Georgia, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, wow. uh, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and then Kazakhstan, and then for me it was finished. Uh, it was really, really cool. Um, and along the road, we went through all these uh, very cool old countries. And at one point in Georgia, um, we had a stop. We had a few rest days uh, in uh, Tbilisi. And there I stumbled up on a flea market uh, on some old watches. And I thought what's cooler, like as a memorial for my, for my trip, is to have a watch, a mechanical watch. That's awesome. Yeah, and it was, was basically my first mechanical watch also. Right. Um, but I've been into mechanics, uh, cars, and old cars, old motorcycles and all this stuff for quite a long time. So it felt for me very natural to, to go to watches. Uh, for me, that's kind of the same feel. It's a Volstock, right? Yeah, it was a Volstock, yeah. 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 And uh, it was a working watch, so I, and I, had no, I was not wearing a watch, so it was also really convenient for me uh, to wear it uh, during the rest of the trip. But during the trip, when I was on the Vespa, I was like this. Right. Yeah, and often I, had to wear, I was wearing gloves. Yeah. I was uh, in education for becoming an indus industrial design engineer. Um, yeah, I know. It's, at some point, it struck me uh, that, like, when I was like this on a Vespa, I couldn't read the time. Yeah, because you're you're, you're shaking a lot as well, and the yeah. orientation's not correct. Right? Yeah. So there were two. Back then, for me, there were two things. One, uh, the orienta orientation is not right because you have your hands like this. Right. And and if you're I don't know if you're shaking or yeah. if if there's a bump or or I don't know, and you have to have to to keep your hands on the steering wheel, you cannot. Yeah. So you you want to see in a blink of an eye, what, what's the time? Well, you shouldn't be looking down too long. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. What's and the second thing? The second thing was uh, that I was wearing gloves and often when a glove, it's, it's covering your watch. So I want to, to have a watch that you uh, could easily wear on top of your clothes. Right. And back then I wasn't, I didn't know anything about watches. I, it was for me really the, the first, uh, I was a novice for, for in, in the watch world. And I still feel a little bit like I am a novice. Well, you're very modest. But I remember you were telling me that you were looking at these driving style watches. So we, you know, the, I guess two of the first examples that come to mind is the, the Tonk Asymmetrique from Cartier or the Historic from Vacheron Constantine in 1921. And the orientation in terms of the dial, it's canted, yep. but it's fixed. Yep. And you were thinking, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool if you could actually change it to the position that you want? Because not everyone's position is the same. I ride motorcycles, like you say, and your position on a motorcycle is actually quite different from your position yep. on a car, right? Yep. So when did you come up with the idea of a mobile carriage mm -hmm. you know, for your watch? Well, basically for me, it was also that I wanted to, to have a watch that I could wear like always. Right. So, ah, okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah so I, I really wanted also like now I wanted to have it as a as a normal watch and not not to have people think about oh why is this watch under an angle, but but yeah just as a more dressy style watch. You're absolutely right actually because the watches that are at an angle when you're not on a car yeah. are really fun <laughs> to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah it was and and next to that I I really wanted to. Um, like to, to integrate it. So uh, at first glance, no one sees it has this mechanism inside. Uh, and that's also really funny because uh, I know people are always surprised when I, when I do this and then, uh, and then they don't get it. Where well, you did what? And, <laughs> yeah, and then they see, they say, huh, what? And then, and then you, and 
yeah, we have a conf conversation. That's very cool. Yep. Um, I was reading that you were something of an autodidact, and so you decided to figure out how to machine the original prototype of the case yourself. Yeah. What was that process like, and how many experiments did you do to get it really right? I got kind of lucky. I, I, I turned my, my idea into my graduation project at the Technical University in, a, in the Netherlands, in Holland. And then I was introduced to a professor, uh, Bruno Nienhaber. Uh, he worked at the university back then. And he actually, uh, he designed and made his, uh, his own watches as well. Uh, it was his big breakthrough wow. back, in, back in the 70s. He, uh, his first watch was, it's, I think it's still in the collection of the Modern Museum of, of uh, the, in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Wow. Yeah. What's his uh, name? Uh, Bruno Nienhaber. Oh, of Einberg. course. Yeah. Dude, that's incredible. Okay. Yeah, he has, uh, yeah. a w w his first watch was you wear it around your neck. Uh, you should see it. It's, it's really modernistic, right. uh, but really nice. And Very it was cool. his breakthrough as a designer. So uh, anyhow, he, he really taught me yeah, the principles of, of uh, developing, making prototypes, uh, making proper drawings, also for production later. Um, so yeah, that was, was really crucial for, for my uh, start, yeah. You know, but what was interesting to me is that the watch, when it was created, was actually like extremely mature in terms of the voice, the aesthetic voice, right? Like I loved the integration of this sort of like horse bit type lug into the outer case. The audible uh, dimension of the mobile carriage in the interior is actually very pleasing. Like the mm -hmm. click sounds good, mm -hmm. you know, and it feels good as well. Yeah. Um, I think that it, it, what I really liked about the watch, it was, it was, even though it was your first project and it was even your school project, the end result was a very mature watch, so much so that clearly it, other people want to buy it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's taken uh, over eight years now. Right. So it, it's, I also really like that that, that I'm like, I really wanted to do something good in the beginning. So it took me a long time to come to something that I really liked and that I thought, okay, this is good enough to go to market, but I'm still like fine tuning it uh, almost every day or well, maybe not anymore, but I've, I've been fine tuning it for the past four years even. Well, you know, Lawrence, from what I understand, it's the guys that do the best are the ones who are constantly dissatisfied. It, yeah. You know, and that's good. Um, I love the name that you chose for your first commercial collection of Amalfi because when it, you like to drive or you like to ride bikes, like that's the most beautiful and romantic road that you can think of. It's not an easy road also because it's very narrow, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, so tell me, like, how did the Amalfi do once you launched it? Oh, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, but I must say back then, it was uh, it's four years ago, first year, it was still hard for me to, to make a living of this. Right. Um, uh, it was good enough like to continue. I, I felt that I had I, I got recognition and people really liked it But you have to build a brand uh, and, and I mean you, it's not something you do uh, in, in How do you say it? Uh, overnight overnight yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you sacrificed everything right like you oh, put yeah. all your savings You even sold your m beloved Vespa which you restored yourself to yeah. a gentleman that's in the room, but we won't mention who <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, it was really hard. Right. It's um, it's such a cliche, but uh, it's been a it's been a long road. Uh, so it's another analogy, but uh, yeah, it's been a very long road. And I would say last year was finally like really rewarding. And so let's talk about last year. So. Uh, the watch was doing well, it's beautifully made, great value, um, very unique. But then you created a watch in collaboration with this iconic rabbit, the most <laughs> beloved rabbit in the world, Miffy. And that watch broke the internet. Right? Yeah. So tell me about how did this idea for a Miffy Moonface watch come about? I, how, also the Moonface itself is such a beautiful uh, way of using Miffy. Yeah. And, and, and about the design process of that watch. Yeah, I have to laugh because it's, you're saying yeah, it's the bunny and it's it's kind of funny and it, it is funny and that's also what I wanted. But it's like when I introduced this idea to to you talk to friends first about your idea and almost all of them they said you are doing what you <laughs> are you you're crazy you're you're into classic cars right. you you made a driver watch for yeah. gentleman drivers and now you're coming with a with a rabbit on the dial what the f what's wrong with you <laughs> did they right. actually say what the f 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was really, I was convinced. I thought, yeah. Dude, this is cool. This yeah. is, you, you, I mean, this is, I was really excited. Uh, and I know back then when I had the idea, I, I, I called the, the owners of Miffy right away and yeah. to ask them about the, the protectors of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. We have to be careful. Okay, okay. Yeah. I want to know how that conversation <laughs> goes because in order for us to create this watch together, yeah. which is the Miffy Double Hemisphere Moon, uh, I also had to speak to the uh, protectors of the uh, Dick Brunner estate, and they're wonderful people, yeah. but they are very serious. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Like, I felt like I was in, in front of the school principal because <laughs> they were like, "Explain who you are and what you want to do with Miffy." We're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like being in front of like Nick Hayek Senior, you know. Yeah. 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 So so, but tell me how the conversation went with you. Um, well, it was it was really nice actually because my I'm like my case now is still made in, in the Netherlands in Utrecht actually. Right. Uh, I work together with the company who do the milling and I do the finishing. But anyhow, so because there are. Uh, like a large part of the watch, the roots are also in the Netherlands and in Utrecht, where De Bruyne, so the the, the cartoonist of uh, of Miffy, uh, came from, and they they like they kind of felt the connection. Nice. Um, so that that's what they really liked, and they also liked the minimalism, the kind of Bauhaus aesthetic, uh, which also connected to De Bruyne. Yeah, because you know, even though Dick Bruyne is well known for a cartoon rabbit, a beloved cartoon rabbit, Miffy, uh, I believe translated into over 30 different languages, 50 different books, um, sold 100 million copies, uh, he was a very serious artist. And he was deeply influenced by Ferdinand Leger. He mm -hmm. loved Matisse. And actually, I think one of the reasons why Miffy is so visually appealing is that M Miffy is a masterpiece of minimalism as yep. well. You know? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's what that's also what I really like about him is that we were talking just before about the development of my watch and how it's still kind of evolving or maybe changing over years. And that's the same what happened with uh, Miffy. If you look at the first Miffy, it's completely different. It's I would say it's it's not so pretty like the first first versions, but it becomes much more subtle and much more yeah, like it is now. It's, Incredible! It's, it's a fifty years development. Fantastic! Yeah. So what I loved about it also is that you decided to not just use Miffy. Like I mean, I guess a very facile interpretation was just to put Miffy on the dial. Right? Yeah. Or maybe yeah, yeah. Use Miffy's hands yeah. or whatever, as you see with a lot of the Mickey Mouse or Snoopy yeah. type watches. Yeah. But instead, you decided to put Miffy in a moon face indicator. One of the world's largest moon phase indicators, incidentally, at 20 mm in diameter, yep. and then you decided to make everything in the moon phase indicator luminous, which you know that's a, I love. It. <laughs> yeah. Tell me why you yeah. did that. It was, I, like you said, it was, for me it was too easy to just put her on a dial. Um, I wanted to do something like um, it had to be classy still, um, but she had to be on there. Um, so I had to find a way to implement her without to, it becoming too childish. That's, that's what I was looking for, I think. Because if you put it on like this on a dial, like just a picture, then it soon is a, like a really childish watch or something. But once you make it more luxurious or more sophisticated and, sophisticated yeah. and subtle, then it's suddenly, I don't know, it blends in and it's, it's I don't know, yeah, it's uh, yeah, sophisticated, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, I, it's it's stunning. You know? And then the, and the way it's it's yeah. made as well, because I could also go with a moon face. I could also just go with a printed moon face, right. or like a, a pet printed moon face, or something like that. That would be the obvious thing to do. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just I like the idea if if she's really three D, three dimensional, and um, yeah. And then the obvious thing was to do to fill it with doom, but. I mean, she's on the moon and she's surrounded by stars, so yes. how cool is it if she also lights up? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's awesome. You yeah. know, it's cool because, it, yeah, there's a real technical value to the watch as well. I mean, the three-dimensional engraving that's used to create Miffy and then to have it applied, like filled, hand-filled with yep. loom as well yep. is phenomenal. Um, yep. But I also like the romanticism of it as well because when I look at this watch, it, it's simultaneously sophisticated enough for me as an adult that I love it, but the child in me is also feels very comforted by it as well. Yep. And when you did the luminous yep. moon phase, it reminds me of, you know, like at nighttime when kids have the little like yeah, nightlights yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and maybe some adults as well, I'm not saying I have anything in my head, but maybe I do. You know, like um, it, it's just this kind of totem of like protection and, and optimism, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, 
That, that's awesome. So tell me when this came out and like it just went crazy, like yep. it went viral. It broke the internet. Like, yeah. So the, the first 25 was still a bit easy, but it sold out within eight hours. And then, I mean, there were a lot of people who missed out on this. So I got a long waiting list. And then we did a second release with three times 25 pieces with three different colors. Yeah. And yeah, that was crazy. It was, it was sold out within three minutes. Wow, so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember, you know, when we met, I think it was during Geneva Watch Days, actually. Um, or, I know we met online first and we started having conversations and yep. then eventually yep. we met in person during Geneva Watch Days. You know, when I saw the moon face indicator and I realized, of course, first it was huge. And, and actually, as most moon face indicators are, you have two um, moons and in this case, two miffies. Yep. I was like, dude, it's such a cool moon face. What if we were to create a sapphire dial for it mm -hmm. and then uh, be able to have essentially a double hemisphere moon because yep. the northern and southern hemisphere um, displays are different and to have it both in the same watch is cool. And then second of all, because your indications are all luminous, with a sapphire dial, you're constantly recharging the loom as well yep. because UV light's passing through. And, uh, and you were so kind to agree to embark on this project. Yeah, no, it was really nice. It was, it was a cool, very cool idea as well. So. Yeah, and, and I mean, I also really like the, that it's a sapphire insert, so it's not, it's not plastic or it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's real soft sapphire. Well, I remember you were sapphire. very insistent on that. You were like, you know, if we're going to do it, I really want to make sure that it's really high quality. Yeah. Uh, and it's amazing for it to actually be sapphire crystal as well. Um, and it was kind of funny because I think we had a friend that was a, a very famous collector came by and became enchanted with his watch. And he's like, oh my God, this is kind of like a long lumen version of the <laughs> Miffy watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, tell me more about the Miffy journey for you. Will you continue to do these type of watches? What, what's next for you? Um, we're, I think for the next project, I'm also looking at going a bit back to my, like the car routes again, nice. to please my friends. And uh, just, yeah, also to show the world that we're not only a Miffy watch. Right. I mean, the, the, maybe the most difficult thing is if you have one uh, successful product or launch, I mean, then you, I think when you're really successful, you have multiple successful launches. So we're looking at a, a different launch and different subject uh, back to cars and hopefully it will be as successful as this. But I, I, I will doubt it because Miff is just, I mean, it was, it's hard to beat. I, to I be love honest. this it's, watch. Uh, and it makes me smile every time I put it on. Um, we are doing a collaborative edition of this, 100 pieces of this beautiful blue Miffy double moon uh, with the sapphire dial. Um, I, oh, two questions for you. One is uh, Derek and Co. Who, so who's the Co? It's you. Right? Oh, yeah, because I'm my name's Co. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question is, I know that you had sold your beloved uh, Vespa in order to fund the creation of your brand. I would hope that you're now in a position to purchase it back. Will your friend sell it back to you? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> but he's a good character. He's, he's a good character. Yeah. So he's keeping it safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I will, I'm sure I'll, I can buy it back sometime. I, I'm, I'm sure too. Let me, if you need me to help uh, negotiating, let me, let me <laughs> yeah. allow me to help you as well. <laughs> Sir, it's Thank such you. a pleasure. Lawrence, congratulations you. on your success. You're a great guy. It's a beautiful watch. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers.